Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. I wanna start off today by wishing you all a very blessed Easter. I hope that you've had a wonderful weekend celebrating Resurrection Sunday with your family. Because it has been Holy Week and lots of things going on in our lives and at church, I do have a shorter video for you today. I have three brand new DIYs for you, as well as two of my favorite Resurrection Sunday DIYs from the past. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, I'm making this hanging clip frame sign using two packs of five gallon paint sticks, four of these wood and galvanized metal picture frames from Dollar Tree, some jute twine, and some wood beads. So here I am taking the six paint sticks in my two packs from Lowe's, and I am going to paint them on the front, the back, and all the edges with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Once I get all six of those painted white on all sides, I'm going to then take my Waverly chalk paint in mineral and a chippy brush and just dry brush distressing my paint sticks. Now, you could see when I started um, dry brushing the gray, some of the ruler lines, and so I flipped those sticks over. I didn't want to have those um, ruler lines showing. So you'll see here in a second, as I started sanding, I could really see them. So I flipped those sticks over and I'm gonna dry brush them again so that everything looks nice and uniform. Dry brushing is one of those things where it's definitely um, as a matter of preference. If you don't like to do that, then just stick with your solid color that you paint on your sticks. Once I did do some dry brushing, I'm gonna take my little micro sander again and just kind of blend that gray paint in, get everything nice and smooth, before we move on to our next step. Now I love these wood and metal frames from Dollar Tree. I've been seeing them again in my stores. I'm going to remove the stand and then also take um, some pliers and remove that metal bracket so that they will lay flat on my paint stick sign here. These are actually really easy to remove. Just don't try to do it with your hands. Make sure you grab some pliers and those will pop right out of that MDF background. Once you have all four of these, I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach my frames. I want a nice permanent bond, but also the instant bond with the hot glue. And I'll also use the hot glue on the entire back of the frame just to get everything nice and stuck down. I chose to stagger my frames, but you can put them on however you want. And because I'm gluing my frames on this way, I did not have to put any um, craft sticks or anything on the back of my project because gluing the frames on kept my six paint sticks together. So I'm going to do this to all four of my frames and then we'll move on to decorating our sign. Now I'm going to use some jute twine to make the hanger for my sign. I went around the left edge and I'm tying a double knot here at the top with my short piece there. And then I will take the long piece kind of up and over and then tie around the right side as well. This is just another way that will help keep our six paint sticks together as I will also hot glue the jute twine in just a couple of places, namely right here on the knot and then on the back here, I'm just putting a little hot glue behind the twine in about two or three places. That'll also keep it from slipping around. So there we're taking the twine then around to the other side. But before I tie it, I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on the end and I wanted to string some beads on here. This bead garland is another one I bought at Christmas time from Walmart. 
It's got unfinished beads in two different sizes. And so I'm just gonna string some of these on the top of my sign just to make it a little more decorative and elevate the value. So I'm doing, just like the garland, three small beads and then a large bead. And I'm gonna do that about four or five times until I have enough beads on there. And then tie it like you can see there, I went around the right side and ended with the knot on top. Now just taking a couple pieces of greenery from Dollar Tree, I'm zip tying them together in the center, and then we will hot glue this to the top of our sign. I am just going to run a line of hot glue there on the top sign and line the greenery up in the center. And my finishing touch for DIY number one will be one of these pulled string burlap flowers. And this will go right in the center between our two pieces of greenery and cover up the zip tie as well. I love how this turned out. You can clip little pictures to it. You can clip um, letters to spell home or love. I'm just really excited for this neutral farmhouse decor to add to my decorations. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back and thanks so much for your support of my channel. For DIY number two, I'm going to be using four of these hexagon signs from Dollar Tree, as well as some scrapbook paper and my Be Kind quad stencil from Magnolia. So it's actually awesome because when I first bought these, I didn't even realize that it had glass on the front. That's going to um, make this project even quicker. So what I'm gonna do to all four of them is remove the backing. I'm going to take out the paper inserts that are inside and we'll do that for all four. And then you'll see I'm going to trace the backing onto each of the four different types of scrapbook paper and then we'll insert that back in. So I'm gonna leave the frame and the glass and take the backing here. And I just went through my stash and found paper that I thought would be cute for a B theme. Um, you can definitely just paint the background if you want, but I'm just tracing around the hexagon backing and I am going to cut that out with my scissors and then make sure to cut each of the notches where the little, um, I don't know what you call it, the little piece on the back that holds the back of the frame in place. So once we get all those little notches cut out, I'm just gonna use a glue stick all over the back of my scrapbook paper and then press that down really well and attach it to the cardboard backing. Next, it is helpful then to turn it over and trim off any extra scrap of paper that is sticking out past the backing and then pop your, oops, forgot to put the glass in. <laughs> there we go. Get the glass into the frame and then put the backing in with the scrapbook paper. When I got these stencils from Magnolia, I thought, oh, I really hope I can find some of either the hexagon mirrors or the signs at Dollar Tree because I knew I wanted to use them to make something for a bee theme. So here I have the scrapbook paper on the background now back into the frame 
with the glass and I'm gonna do that to all four. These are the stencils that come in the Be Kind quads. All four of these come on one stencil sheet and I'm just gonna use chalk paste and stencil right on the front of the glass. You could stencil on the paper first, but the fact that I'm putting this on the glass and I'm not sealing it, I could clean these off later with some water and a paper towel and be able to take the chalk paste off. So I'm doing that to all four, getting my stencils centered and pressed down. Now going over each stencil with my coal black chalk paste from Magnolia. Once you have the chalk paste pressed in and squeegeed over all the holes in the mesh, then we're gonna go ahead and peel and reveal our stencils. These were pretty sticky on the glass, so I did want to go a little slowly so I didn't stretch my stencil out. And here's how they turned out. I love these. You could have these spread out on different shelves or I plan on hanging them together in a grouping on the wall, kind of down, up, down, up or something like that. I love how these turned out. So cute and simple. For DIY number three, we're going to use a pizza pan from Dollar Tree and some more five gallon paint sticks to make a hanging flower pocket. Also some florals and one of these metal windmills from Dollar Tree. So the first thing I did once I removed the paper from the front is I'm going to give the front of my pizza pan two pretty good coats of my Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. It's just a nice dark chocolate brown. Of course, you could use any color that you'd like, but I want this to kind of look like wood. I did not do any distressing on this. Um, you could use black with a chip brush to kind of make it look a little more like wood grain. So now I'm taking some of my, one more pack, so three of my five gallon paint sticks and just kind of marking with a pencil where I want to cut them with my saw to make them fit across um, our pizza pan. I'm kind of trying to make it look like a fence in the front here. So I will need three pieces and the one at the bottom will be pretty small. So just using my miter box and my table saw, I'm going to just cut those paint sticks to the right size. Then once I have them all cut, I'm going to use that same truffle chalk paint to paint them the same color as the pizza pan. So here's my little fence pieces, but before I glue them down, I'm going to take some hot glue and some of this floral moss from Dollar Tree just to add some grass here into my very thin basket that I've made with the pizza pan. So just sprinkle that onto the hot glue, press it down, and you do want to make sure that it is pretty flat. We want to still be able to glue down our paint sticks, but I'm just putting some in the bottom uh, third, I guess, of the pizza pan. And if you see any empty spots, go ahead and just add some more hot glue, add some more moss, and a little goes a long way with this stuff. And now I'm gonna glue down my three paint stick pieces using a combination of E6000 and the hot glue. I wanted to use the E6000 because I am gluing onto metal just to make sure that our paint stick fence pieces stay down. So I'm gonna do that to all three. I'll be removing loose pieces of moss as I go, but as we get all three pieces on, we can then move on to decorating or filling our little flower pocket. 
This is definitely optional, but I decided to add one of these little wooden words to the front of my flower pocket. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in celery. It's the same color that I've painted the metal windmill that we're going to be adding to the project very soon. So I'm using a small paintbrush and painting all of the letters with this light sage color called celery. Next, I'm taking a pack of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree, and I'm very slowly going around the edge with some hot glue and then laying the nautical rope. I'm really liking this thinner uh, strand of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. It just feels like it's a little higher quality and it just holds together a little bit better. So I started at the very top of my pizza pan and I'm going around, like I said, the right edge and then I will go over the paint sticks and then back up to the top. Now you can see the first thing I added was one of these metal windmills from Dollar Tree. I did paint it the same celery color and then added a wood button to the center. Now I'm gluing the word blessed that I also painted in the celery color. And then the last step is to add a little another piece of nautical rope for a hanger and then just cut some pieces of florals, whatever you have on hand, or whatever colors you want to add. You're just kind of poking those down into the floral moss and filling it in as much or as little as you'd like. And here's how my finished product turned out. I love how you can definitely modify this project for your colors, whatever um, theme you have going on with your decor. And I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. My next DIY is from a past video. This is a He is Risen cross display. It's very simple to put together with a small crate or box, some floral foam, some moss, and then just some sticks from my yard is what I used. So I had this crate that I found at a thrift store. I did just go ahead and paint the entire thing white, but of course that is optional. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. Then using some moss and some faux moss stones from Dollar Tree, I'm going to fill the box or the crate in. Now I did find some sticks in my yard and I made some crosses just with some simple hot glue. But then I did some jute twine, kind of crisscross on each one to tie the sticks together so that um, they would stay tight and not fall off. So I would go um, crisscross one way for a few times of the string and then flip it around and do some other. This is actually how they would lash the horizontal piece of the cross um, to the tall one standing up. So I'm going to do this to three stick crosses. My taller one in the center is, like I said, going to be a little bigger to represent the cross that Jesus was on. So once you have your crosses made, you can add them to your crate that just has some floral foam. And then with hot glue, I covered it with the moss. Now I'm just poking my three crosses into my floral foam. And then we will do one more thing to add one more touch to our project.
Now here is another way you can add wording to your project. I just printed out the words, he is risen on um, Word, just using a font that I liked. And then placing a piece of burlap ribbon over the words, I'm kind of tracing them with a black paint marker so that the words now, instead of just being on the paper, are going to be on the ribbon. And then once it's all on the ribbon, we're just going to glue that to the front of the project. And I just love how this turned out, how simple it is for the true meaning of Easter. And the second past project is He Is Risen Story Blocks. I found this little wooden block puzzle at a thrift store again, but you could use the cubes from Dollar Tree or even the foam dice. I'm painting them all white as well as the wood uh, framed sign. And then I just printed this picture I found on a Google image search of like Easter sunrise or something like that. Cut it out to fit the inside of my box. And now I'm applying a thin layer of Mod Podge to my box and pressing down the picture on the inside. And then I will do another layer of Mod Podge over the top to make sure it's sealed in nice and good and will not peel off. Now for those nine cubes that came in the puzzle, I have painted them all white on all the sides. I'm using some scrapbooking stickers that I have to spell out the words, he is risen. If you don't have sticker letters, you could definitely just write the different letters with a paint marker, but I have these on hand, so I thought I would use them. Then I did take this shoe polish. This is interesting if you want to distress your projects, make them look a little older. I'm using the middle color, which is like a brown, and just kind of going over the edges on all of my cubes. And I'm also going to do it on the frame of my picture sign, just to give it more of an older, worn look. This is definitely up to your preference. And then I am going to seal that shoe polish in and the stickers with more Mod Podge. And here's the finished product. I love how simple and easy it was to put together. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.